What just happened, Blani? I just had radiation. And uh, I fell asleep. And it was, what, the fourth day in a row? Fourth? Mm -hmm. Of radiation? That's right. And tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Monday, because today is Friday, on Monday is day number five. Mm -hmm. um, power to you for <laughs> withstanding all this and still having mm -hmm. a smile on your face. Uh, how, how, how do you feel? Did you feel anything during this radiation? I just keep watching that. I don't feel anything when it's happening. It's just the machine is moving around me and I'm laying there and just cannot move. That's the only thing. So thankfully I don't feel anything because otherwise if I wanted to scratch my nose or whatever, I'm not allowed to and it would shut the whole thing down. Oh, really? Yeah, it stops moving because then I would be radiating the wrong place. Mm. So I have to just lay there. Completely still. Mm-hmm. Well. So I fell asleep. That's the best thing to do to stay completely still. I don't know if people move more when they consciously try not to move or when they are asleep. Because when you're asleep, mm. you can still yeah, dream something. True. and you know. But, but my hope was that since I was laying in such an uncomfortable position that I wouldn't be tempted to move because it would be really out of the ordinary. I don't know. <laughs> well, um, you did it, and there's only one to go, mm -hmm. right, on Monday, and then you're radiation-free. Mm -hmm. You're done with this part of the treatment. They already stopped treating one of the lungs today. One only needed three, and the other one needed two extra ones. So okay. one, one should be all dead now, I guess, right? Awesome. The cancer, not the lung. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be bad if your mm -hmm. lung was dead. <laughs> That's yes. not what we want. <laughs> so this um, here from hospital basically is simply to bring you a an update about what's currently going on. And the rest of today's video is going to be a second part, the second part of your stories from Mexico. Is it photographer's paradise? Photographer's Paradise, yes. I mean, primarily, though, we're getting into more commercial work. We're wedding photographers. And I did think that whole time that the lights and the textures and the buildings and the everything in that city would have been so fun to walk around and take somebody there to take their picture. Um, it's not as colorful in Mexico City as you tell me about Guatemala, but there's still all of these interesting buildings and ornate and of course, I didn't go to all the neighborhoods in Mexico City because we had such a small period of time there. And I did want to say we really wished we had much longer time there because it was so much a surprise to us. So uh, after Mexico City, you went to this bed and breakfast that is closer to the actual area where the butterflies are. So tell me a little bit about that. How was the uh, how were the hosts and what what happened there? We took um, an Uber from Mexico City, which was about a two hour drive or so, into the Cerro Pallone Mountains. And we went to and stayed at JM Butterfly b, &B. So this is a um, butterfly bed and breakfast and they take you on tours. And they were, uh, Joel, who is the co-owner with his wife Ellen, is Mexican and they actually met on a butterfly tour where he was giving a butterfly tour and there she was. I, I met Ellen in the forest. Uh, she came to see butterflies uh -huh. and I was the guide. So it was nobody else in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> so. so she was just wandering on her own and then, oh no, she was with another group <laughs> You found her wandering in the forest? <laughs> yeah, in the forest. No. Um, um, I used to work for a, I would say fancy hotel outside of Sitacuaro, mm -hmm. um, and they sell tours. And, and you know, at that time, I just came back from the United States, and I, they knew I speak a little bit, in, a little bit of English. Mm -hmm. So they called me, and they offered me the job. So, so that day they, they called me and they say that I have a tour, and I, you know, I had to drive from Machero to that hotel and pick up the people from there, bring them here, and go into the forest, come back, and go back. And, and they used to pay me 200 pesos a day, which is like $10 or like $11 probably a day. But I just gave my um, horse person that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can you imagine, like me, yeah. you know, sometimes I had to do more work and-, and Running and, the whole tour for, for 200 pesos. For 200 pesos, yes. <coughs> so, 
And, and my biggest group from that hotel, it was 36 people. Oh my wow. gosh. And, and that day, you know, like people left the tips at the hotel and the owner, I think, gave me the tips. You know, so he paid for my, he paid my salary in my day. Uh -huh. So whatever money comes to his hotel, it's his what? money. Yeah. So they called me, they said, I have a tour. And, and I went there and it was Ellen. And Ellen was the only person in my tour. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that was... That was funny, you know. Uh, my uncle, my dad at that time, they still had uh, forest rangers. But my uncle saw me with Ellen there, and my uncle just left me there. You know, it was, it was no one, no one else that day at the bottom. Uh -huh. It was just me and Ellen. So what, what was it like at the uh, at that location at the B and B? Because from the pictures you saw, you showed me, it, it looked like it was an idyllic place. It, like you guys were surrounded by literally singing birds and beautiful <laughs> mountains and um, you know views that are just to die for and yes. it was peaceful and quiet and mm -hmm. and it was 75 degrees which is like a perfect temperature for a human being from what i can tell yes. the uh, temperature during the day was perfect in the evening it went down to about 40 and it was in this incredible location it's in the valley so there were mountains surrounding it i felt like and then when we were watching the sunsets in the evening, you could see layers and layers of mountains in the distance. And we would sit and watch the sunset. I feel guilty telling you this because I feel like you would have really loved to have been there. And I know you were injuring your back <laughs> at this time, so I feel really guilty about it. But it's anyway. All, it's all right. But, <laughs> and, in, and for the audience. I was, just, to, I was just here taking care of three dogs with a hurt back, you know, cleaning Chopping after wood, them yeah. and keeping the house warm and stuff like that. So while you were doing that, I was on a rooftop in this valley looking these mountain sunsets and drinking margaritas. I did drink a margarita. I mean, <laughs> you, have you have to, to live, live a little. A little. <laughs> so, um, and the other incredible thing that was a big surprise about this bed and breakfast was that there were so many interesting people I met there. Tell me about your um, butterfly conservation. I volunteer at a nature center, so I started getting interested in monarchs, and now I raise them. I have a decent garden, and I find, oh, maybe 80 or 100 eggs every year, and I bring them in and put them in. Um, uh, aquariums that have mesh tops and raise them to butterflies mm -hmm. and then help have the neighborhood kids help me release them. So I have lots of neighborhood families growing milkweed and... And what made you start doing that? Um, I was here 20 years ago in Mexico looking at the butterflies oh. and when I retired I wanted to do something with kids in nature and that's what I did. Cool. Um, Thank and what was your name? Marianne McNerly from Minneapolis. Do you have any um, blog or anything? No. No. <laughs> no. You are generally the one to be outgoing and talk to people and I felt like this wasn't even something that need, needed to be done because everybody just, it was kind of strange that people who went to this bed and breakfast all had similar feelings about things. We all loved butterflies for different reasons. Everybody had their stories of why they love butterflies and people were just so nice. And where are you from? I'm from the north side of Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what's your name? Dave. Dave Anderson. Oh, Dave. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Most of my relatives came okay. from Sweden or Finland. Uh -huh. So, uh, so yeah, this is your second time? This, this is the second this time. I was here a year here. ago, January. Wow. And okay. then um, I just decided that uh, there was, I always find work at this place in Tennessee. I just, you know, I like donate my time, you know, or, or whatever. So uh, I found a way to get down here again. So I stay with this family for a week. And then since I'm here, this is my week to roam around. So how do you know the family in Tennessee? They're actually missionaries. Oh, okay. So I know them through the church that I go to back in Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's how I met them, you know. So, mm -hmm. so they have uh, a house that needed a lot of work. So I changed out all the lighting this time. Mm -hmm. So it was good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I met an artist there who um, actually painted or was drawing Eve and I while we were sitting and drinking that margarita. 
And I also met Helen Frost, an author who wrote this book called Monarch and Milkweed. She gave me a signed copy to give to Sheridan. The bed and breakfast owners were so nice. I sat and talked with both of them about their lives in the United States, how they came to, to Mexico, how the house had changed over this long period of time. Any, anyway, they were one part which I expected to visit and meet there, not necessarily to interact with as much, but we did. Every evening we all sat on the rooftop and shared this beautiful view and sunsets, them and all of the guests who I love. <laughs> Now I have a new item added to my bucket list, and that's to go back with you. We have to do it. Yes. We are going somewhere. <laughs> One day.